and welcome back to another video. It's Brianna Ray from BriIY here to bring you baby stuff. My sister is about to have her second baby and I'm so excited to introduce my little niece to the world. And of course that means I have been ever inspired to make baby things. So this week I wanted to try my hand at making a couple of teethers. I did get this idea off of a blog post that I found online, which I will link in the description box below. But um, I did take a little bit of my own liberties with this, got my own colors, did my own designs and things of that nature. And honestly, some of her things are super, super cool. So if you want to see some other really fun design ideas, definitely check that out. Uh, she's very talented and her stuff is super easy to follow. So with all that said, I'm going to show you today how to make three different kinds of baby teethers. I'm going to start off with this like silicone bead pacifier holder and I'm also going to do one that clips, which I have another sample of right here, uh, one that opens and closes with these little plastic bits. And then I'm going to show you how to do one with a natural wood ring and some terry cloth. So if all natural is your thing, I've got something for you too. With all that said, I think it's time to get started. I got started by laying out all my beads in an order that I thought they would look the most attractive, but I did get this entire pack of tons of silicone beads that I have had enough to make, I think, five different teethers slash pacifier holders, and they're all about the same length as well, and that was $20, and it also came with the necessary nylon cord. Of course, I did not realize it came with the cord and I totally bought this big <laughs> giant guy. So now I have this, so drop in the comments below what you think I can do with it. I'm still not sure because this is quite a bit. Um, but for $20, you basically have everything you need and that also included these little connector bits. So if you don't want to have to do the pacifier holder and you just like these, um, definitely a great way to go and relatively inexpensive. So you're getting each teether for about $4. And uh, the only other thing that you might need, of course, is the little pacifier clips. You can get these in plastic. I went with metal just to make sure it's more durable. It just snaps open uh, so it can be clipped to wherever it needs to go. Starting with the pacifier holder, of course, I've cut my nylon cord into, I would say this is about 22, maybe 24 inches. I'm not sure I don't have a meter stick on me, but I think that's uh, about the about the approximate length of it. Um, and what you're going to do is start at the bottom and form a loop. I'm going for just a, maybe like an inch longer than my hand. So I think it's about maybe two and a half to three inches. And I'm just gonna tie this off into a double knot and it is okay to leave a tail here. I'm just gonna be shoving this tail into the other beads that I pop on and that has lasted pretty well with my others. So once you have your loop all figured out, and this is what I think is great about using the uh, cord that came with it. I was gonna try to use the thicker cord initially, but frankly, it's a lot easier to slip the beads through when you're using the cord that came with it. So definitely recommend that. And as I go the first couple beads, I'm gonna make sure I string this extra bit through. Uh, thankfully, it's just thin enough and stiff enough that I did not need to have any uh, you know, pull, do anything special to get it pulled through. I did also just put on some press on nails cause I don't know, I was feeling kind of bougie, I guess. Um, and they are ridiculously difficult to work with. This would be why that I always have kind of clean nails in my videos, I think, uh, just not the vibe for me. All right, we've got our whole guy together. Now you're gonna take your pacifier clip and I like to keep mine nice and close just so that the beads don't have too much opportunity to move around. I think it's nice to kind of keep them together. So I am going to create a knot nice and close down here and make sure to tighten it as close to the bead as possible. Just to make sure that there's no fraying on these open cords, or on these open um, edges here, I like to take my lighter and the ends just a little bit so that they get flat and kind of melted together I guess is the best way to describe it and there you have a super easy teether slash pacifier holder super cute all right for our second style we are once again going to be needing our nylon cord beads in whatever order your heart desires, and these two little plastic bits. One is going to have to have these open ends and one is going to be flat. That way they can clip together. So the way that we're gonna start this, you're gonna pick either one of your ends. It does not particularly matter. And you are going to string your nylon cord through the end and tie it into a knot. Once again, I'm using the same length of cord. You're not gonna need all of it, presumably, uh, but better to be safe than sorry, I always say. Cut it relatively close to the edge 
And I'm going to again take my lighter and clean up those edges. You can see a pretty stark difference between that and this end. A lot tighter, kind of more balled up, whereas this one has these open pieces that would fray a lot easier. And then all you'll have to do is take this and pop the knot inside. Boop, and you are all good to go. All the way done, I think it looks great. Now it's time for the other side. This one's gonna be a touch more complicated just because it's so close to the end. Uh, so I kinda push it maybe just a little too far up nice and close to the edge before I start tying my knot. There we go. Now clip it pretty close to the edge. Just gonna kinda touch this one super lightly since it's kinda close. There we go. Tap it down, pull it in, and there we have it. All we gotta do now is clip it together. And there we have it. Here is all the different styles of teethers I made. I think they all turned out really cute and I'm quite pleased with the way this went. Now let's move on to the more natural side. For the last design, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need wooden rings. Now, I've also seen people attach these wooden rings to the original kind of style, like the circular ones. Something like this, probably when they're more evenly sized. Uh, but these that I'm going to make are not going to be with silicone beading. It is going to be with terry cloth, which I have right here. Just some simple white uh, washcloth terry cloth material and some standard fabric that I had laying around. I am going to be creating a my own template for this uh, and showing you how I'm doing that. That way, depending on the size rings you get, I know that the rings that I got uh, maybe a little tiny they don't really fit i mean they kind of like barely fit around the wrist and all that i think they're like two inches but there's a lot of different size rings out there and i want to make sure that everyone's prepared no matter what size ring they got i think mine are two inches um i think that's accurate maybe two and a quarter uh, but I'm going to show you what I did to create the template for this. It's super easy. Um, and if you do not want to make your own and you want to get just simple two inch rings, I will also be selling this template that I've made here on my Etsy shop uh, for a 99 cent download if that is something that is up your alley. This is basically what the template's going to look like, kind of like bunny ears. Um, and the way that it's going to work is you are going to kind of slip through. Uh, this is kind of how I knew that this was the right size for me. What we are going to do is obviously you can flip it through and tie it around this way if you want longer ears, or you can do the lark's head fisherman's knot this way as well. It just kind of depends on the length that you have. In order to create your template, you're going to simply take the wooden ring, whatever wooden ring you have, give it just a little bit of space from the edge of a sheet of paper and i am doing this long ways of course set your ring down and trace the inside of it and you're going to repeat that on both sides of your paper so that you have these uh, circles kind of touching really close to the edge what i did from there is i did a single finger and added kind of a point to the top and to the bottom this way i can kind of gauge approximately uh, the angle of that and I'm going to round it out to create my bunny ears with a point at the end. This doesn't have to be perfect, you'll be able to fix it up later. From here, I think like three fingers is pretty good. I kind of went to the center, added another dot, and I'm going to use this to kind of sketch out a slightly tapered design in the center. That way it fits really nice and easy through your design. From here, all you'll need to do is once you cut it out, I folded mine in half and I simply trimmed it so that it was even on both sides. And just like that, you have a super quick and easy template to fit any size design you have. As you can see, even compared to the one that I just kind of freehanded on my own, the design is quite similar. From here, we're going to trace, use whatever you have, With the designs all traced and cut out, I have them wrong sides together, which means the side that you do not want facing out pressed together, obviously. 
Um, that way we'll be able to stitch around the ugly edges and then flip them inside out so that they look pretty on the outside. That is the master plan. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these over to my sewing machine, which, and by over, I mean I'm going to move the camera set up and put my sewing machine right here because this is where I normally sew. And I'm going to straight stitch from here all the way around, leaving a hole right here for us to be able to flip it out and I will hand stitch that together later. This is the part that's gonna be wrapped around your ring so it shouldn't be super noticeable if it's a little messy. All right, and here we have our nice little piece. I already kind of ran through the first one uh, doing the lark's head knot, but I think I'm gonna do it again. This is uh, kind of the way that it looked. All you have to do for this one is fold it in half, just like this. You're gonna slip it through the ring and we're gonna take the ears of this kind of like bunny looking thing and slip it through the hole in the bottom. And that is one way to wrap it. For the second one, I am going to fold it up this way and I'm going to slip it through this way. And I am just going to tie a basic knot as you would. So both I think look super cute. This one maybe looks more like a bunny. This one looks more like it's got kind of like a bow on top almost. Um, kind of different looks, but I think they both turned out pretty cute. This makes it really easy for you to be able to clean the teether after a while. Um, the advice that I read online says that for these wooden tools, which I actually read on the original blog post for the uh, silicone ones actually, um, I read on there that she disinfects hers with a white vinegar and then treats it to moisturize the wood with a coconut oil. Overall, I think these are super cute. I like the way that they turned out. I love the way that they look. You can throw these in the washer, obviously, just to make sure that they're nice and clean, and obviously disinfect this with the vinegar and treat it with the coconut oil every time you clean it, just to make sure that it stays perfectly safe for baby, and I think they look great. Well, that is all of the designs I had for you today. I made some changes to these guys, shrunk them a little bit and used some of my leftovers and made two more teethers with the wooden rings and the silicone beads just to have that little uh, jazzy part of it. I've got the terry cloth one. I think these turned out really great. I'm very happy with them. I hope you guys feel inspired. I hope you guys like what you saw. And if you do, feel free to like and subscribe. I do put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and I would love for you to be here for the next one. Thanks again so, so much, and I hope to see you then. Bye!